Thanks for listening to Other People's Flowers. If you'd like to have your work feature in the program, please send it to editor at otherpeoplesflowers.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This week's poetry is by Gail Akut. Gail has had work published in Ascent, McNeese Review, Pennsylvania Literary Journey, Poem, Adirondack Review, Weather, The Contemporary West, Florida Review, Slant, Poem, Carolina Quarterly, Arkansas Review, South Dakota Review, Orbis, and many other journals. He has authored three books of poetry, Buffalo Nickel, The Weight of the World, and The Story of My Lives. Naked Truth When I die, or when I'm dead, maybe, I mean I'll go see God, my soul will. What's left over will turn back into sheer clay, or my share of it anyway. And then I'll see him, God, I mean. And then there's Jesus, too. Not that they're not one and the same, at least, mostly. I guess I'll find out when it's too late to do much with that info, but keep it to myself or share it with those around me, though they'll be dead, too. And if so, then they'll already know it. Old news is what it will be. And watch them tell me, but anyway, my soul will stand naked before God. In front of him, that is, and I might be pretty nervous if I have any nerves beyond my poor dead bodies. But anyway, I might say to God, here I am, and sorry for the nudity, since once in Sunday school I said the word. I said naked, or rather Miss Hooker said it. She's our teacher. She was spieling about Eden and Adam and Eve and how they didn't even know that they were nude from top to bottom and some parts unknown, and what happened was I laughed when Miss Hooker was describing them. Naked is a funny word, and maybe just as bad as hell and damn and Jesus H. Christ. Father's fond of that one. It's cursing. No wonder he won't come to church himself. And the same goes for mother, too. She loves him. I know because somehow they made me. It's called Created in the Good Book. God does it, or did, and maybe still does, or at least owns the copyright. It's his business. And then Miss Hooker told me to leave class, so I sighed, yes ma'am, and my classmates hauled as I crawled out of our portable classroom trailer to sit on the two-by-four steps until I got my religion back, which I guess I did because a few minutes later... Miss Hooker called me back in, but I almost said, well, why don't you come out here? I mean, just by herself, no twits to bother us, and in a way we'd be Adam and Eve all over again, but for our clothes, Miss Hooker on that pink shift and me in my navy blue blazer and clip-on tie and farrah slacks and floor shines that I only wear to Sunday school or when somebody croaks, which isn't often enough, so I'll never get them broken in before my feet outgrow them, but... Something tells me my soul never will, and that's what religion really is, and I tell Miss Hooker so, but it's like the kind of revelation you don't have with your clothes on, but one day maybe she'll marry me. Maybe when I'm 15 to her 30, or 18 to her 33, and then on our wedding night I'll show her what I mean, and she'll show me, and even though it's dark our eyes will adjust and God will see that it was good all over again. Is. Irresistible. After Sunday school today, I came back to see Miss Hooker, our teacher, mine, as if we were boy and girlfriend, and had fussed, and it was up to me to get us back together. Together so much so that one day we'll get married. I'm hoping so, though she's 25 to my 10, that makes 15, and that's God's way of saying that we'll have 15 children. Fifteen children between us, that is so, I'd better find one hell of a good job. I still have time, although I might have to go to college and graduate and maybe go some more. Be a doctor or lawyer or college professor or wealthy businessman, so that I'll have enough cash for the family. Sending fifteen brats to college won't be cheap and I only get my allowance every Friday, but I'm saving up for when love demands the best from me. When I'm a man, and of course Miss Hooker is too, a woman I mean, and already old enough to be married, so I'm praying for a decent work one day, and of course that she'll stay single for as long as she can because I'd hate to bust up her marriage. I'm irresistible to women, is what Mother says, and she should know. 
pretty damn close is what we are, and in a way closer than she and father are, and I don't just mean when they're kissing. So I told Miss Hooker after class today how I feel, and she smiled and told me to sit down, and let's talk about it. And we did, and prayed about it as well. That takes some of the fun out of courting her. But when in Rome, do as the Romans do, but don't get crucified and don't crucify no one. Profound. When I die, I'll dwell with Miss Hooker in heaven, my Sunday school teacher. That's Miss Hooker, I mean, not heaven, but then maybe there's some truth in what's not true. She should die before I do, long before. She's 25 and I'm 10, but of course, I might die tomorrow or any second now or moment or an even tinier time, but anyway, I'll see her again unless I go to hell. I hope I don't. It's not the fire and torment I'm afraid of, but the worst torture of being without her for eternity down there, so I need to get my soul saved. My body doesn't signify but for how it puts sins into action, but it rots away and goes back to nature after death. Well, that's what they teach us in our church, and Miss Hooker swears by it. So when I do get saved, I mean, I'll go live with her in heaven, I guess I'm in love with her. Or it's a mighty strong like. To marry her, I'll have to wait a few years, and she might not and be already married, just when I'm ready to splice with her. Or she'll say, oh, I can never marry you, Gail, I'm an old woman now. Say I'll be 18 to her 33, if 33 is not old, then I guess it's old enough, but then I'll realise that love isn't love if it changes. That's Shakespeare, or the Bible. I can't remember which... Or maybe it was President Kennedy. I mean, before he was assassinated. Now there's a big long word for you and a bad one. Even worse than a curse word. And I told Miss Hooker so after class. It's pretty damn hard to get shed of me sometimes. More since I'm in love. And she said, why, Gail? That's very profound. And I said, yes, ma'am, it's serious too. And she laughed. And so when I got home, I checked the dictionary and had a laugh myself. But now I guess she thinks I'm dumb. I assassinated myself, you might say, like suicide. But I didn't mean to. I'm bound to wise up by the time I'm old enough to marry, and at supper tonight I told mother and father as much, and it's funny how they put down their forks at the same time. And I mean not on the rims of their plates like they taught me, but right down on the tablecloth, and then looked at each other, and then started to laugh. But it was a lot like crying in pain, yelping, I guess it is, like my dog does, I mean if I owned one. What did I say, I asked. Mercy, they cried. Quo Vardis One day I'll be dead and go to see God if it's still a day and not the first part of eternity. If eternity comes in parts two, I guess I'll learn the truth when I do, when I die, that is. But what is truth if you're too dead or dead enough to share it? And for all my dead friends over there, and me as well, why would we speak of truth at all, as if we weren't living it? And still I go to Sunday school, in fact I have perfect attendance, going way back to first grade, and I'm a third grader now, so I must be piling up the credits for something. To get to heaven, and I don't mean just to go there to be judged like what will happen with all dead souls, but get into it to stay forever, or make that stay for eternity. But I'm not sure that that's what happens over yonder, and I don't mean that I'll go to hell. Won't the same rules apply down there? When will my punishment begin, if eternity operates below as it does above? I mean, how can it begin if it's just that, eternity? I asked my Sunday school teacher about that after class this morning, and Miss Hooker looked at me with her poor child stare, as if I didn't have the sense God have a crab apple. And maybe I don't, but it wasn't too long before she replied, Gail, we need to take that to the Lord in prayer. But first, suppose that eternity doesn't begin with you or me or anybody else. No. Suppose it's always going on, and when you die, you show up there for the first time, much like you've stepped into a flowing stream. So I asked eternity. Only happens when you're dead, and it's not now, too. I mean, while we're alive? That shut her up, but I didn't mean to. Well, Gail, she said, it's time to go, but we'll talk about it again next week. I said, yes, ma'am, and fell to weeping. Miss Hooker is so lonely. Protestant 
Miss Hooker's my first Sunday school teacher, and will be a good wife for me if I don't die before I'm 16 or 18, or whatever's the best age to marry. She's 25, which isn't exactly young, but I have an open mind to have. So few years under my belt, so to speak. Ten is all I am, and what do you do when you take love hard? What do you do with it, except tell it to the one you love? That would be Miss Hooker, but I love others, my dog and my parents and JFK, but somehow all those loves are different, and ditto my love for God. It's not the same as what I feel for her, Miss Hooker, not the same at all, I wish I knew why. Maybe God will tell me if I do what Miss Hooker says, and pray that I get saved. And then maybe I'll know, but there's something about my love for her that a little sin seems good for. I can't explain it, but I feel it. I think it leads to babies, though I don't know the naked truth, but after Sunday school this morning, I told Miss Hooker that I love her and want her to marry me one day, and she said, Gail, I love you too, but as for marrying, maybe you'd better ask me when you're grown. Let's say 21. And I said, Jesus, woman, you'll be 36 by then. And so I had to get down on my knees with her and beg God to forgive me for taking his name in vain, whatever that means, but I did it. It must be next to love. Remarkable. One day I'll be deader than hell, and in it too, I think. I sin a lot for ten years old, and at Sunday school I'm told that if I don't get right with God and Jesus, and the Holy Ghost as well, then I can count on an eternity full of fire and brimstone and boiling oil and bleeding, and more demons than you can shake a cross at, and all because I don't get along down here, on earth that is, so I'll never rate heaven, and yet I go to Sunday school and take my New Testament with me. If I don't forget it, I mean, but it's small and fits into my navy blue blazer pockets, so how could I forget it, though I manage to? That must be Satan's what that must be, and I've read some of it. I like the part about that star. The star of Bethlehem and raising Lazarus from the dead, and pew! He must have stunk up the place and him just come forth outside his tomb, and Jesus and the fishes of men, and put your nets into the briny again, me hearties. I don't remember his exact words, but those guys got one hell of a catch. And walking on water, Jesus I mean, and calming the thunderstorm. I wish I could do that, the girls would love it, and then getting crucified. But what I mean is rising from the dead, really, after three days, and Mary and some other gal, I forget, coming to the tomb. Was it to deliver flowers? But Jesus has split, and his stone rolled away and waiting, within an angel, who asks Mary and friend, Who are you looking for? Are you looking for Jesus? He ain't here. He's done rose. Or is that whom? And as for the other parts, I don't remember them so well. Paul and Acts of the Apostles and First Corinthians. Something about leather. Maybe that Chrysler commercial with Ricardo Montalban. Maybe that's just a coincidence and a happy one when he says, Remarkable. You buy it, even if you can't afford the thing, and father drives a Ford. But anyway, that's what I like about religion. Because it's goofy, and even grown-ups believe it, and want us kids to, too. Though my folks don't come to church themselves, they like to hang in bed as long as possible on weekends, and sometimes when I'm back home for lunch after church service, they're still in bed, and their door's still locked, and the Sunday paper's still in the mailbox. That's what's called sloth. But I must respect my elders. So I keep my trap shut. I'd lose my allowance anyway, and if that's not respect, then I don't know what is. After church, I went home as usual, but lunch was on the table, and my folks looked rested and even younger, and it was meatloaf and mashed potatoes and gravy and peach cobbler, and halfway through, I started to cry. Onions, I swore, but lying's a sin. Other People's Flowers was produced by Hugo Gibson, Chris Kamon Vutitam and Hamish Adam Kans. If you'd like to have your work featured on the show, please send it to editor at otherpeoplesflowers.com. Thank you for listening.